Hi, I'm Alex Dion. Welcome back to week two of our Lightning Fundamentals. This week, we'll be bringing you two brand new skills challenges. We'll be looking at hand-eye coordination. And for all that, you'll need a ball. Can be a net ball, can be any ball. We'll also be doing a strength challenge for you. And we'll be looking in particular at roots into Lightning. We'll be hearing from Lauren, who's one of our Super League players. And we'll also be hearing from two of our under 17s and their very different routes into Lightning performance netball. Before we start, we're gonna have a quick look at some of our under 15s in competition. Super League players and she's going to tell you why coming through the lightning pathway was important for her as a performance netball player. Hi everyone, I want to encourage you to check out our new virtual sessions, Learn with Lightning the Fundamentals. Um, I had a really good experience as I came through the pathway at Lightning, used it as a good stepping stone before making it into the Super League team and as a player and as a coach I can start to see the skills learned there uh, how important they are into the journey into being a performance athlete. So for an insight into our pathway and what it takes to be a Lightning player, make sure you check out the website and see what it's all about. introduce you now to two of our under 17 Lightning athletes. They've both competed for Lightning uh, this season and they're going to talk about their routes through into the competition squad. Layla had a, the traditional route through County Academy and through club and she's played for a long time. Hermione came from a very different performance sport. She came third in the nationals for swimming and she talks about her route into Lightning netball starting at year 10. Hi, my name is Layla and I play for Love for Lightning Under-17 competition squad. So I started playing that when I was four years old. I started in reception, so I'm now 16 years old, so I've been playing for 12, nearly 13 years. So I actually got into Loughborough through my county, which was Derbyshire, and my coach actually put me forward for the trials. So I trialled for the under-15s, um, even though I was still eligible for under-13s and I was very nervous and I was very scared but it was definitely worth it and I managed to get in. For me the best part for playing for my county Derbyshire was the competitive side to it because up until then I had been playing sort of league games and I I mean I was enjoying myself and I loved it but it, I never really got a sense of like the, the competitive side of it so when joining county I really got a sense of like my game was stepping up because training was longer I had more training and I had to really step myself up if I wanted to carry on with this. Um, so that definitely challenged me and the competitive side of it was really, really good. I kept on playing for Derbyshire for as long as I could up until I got too old and it's definitely something I would recommend to anyone who wants to carry on playing netball. It's really a way to improve and to step up your game but it's also how you can challenge yourself and move forward. So I actually got spotted by my coach that I have now through county, so I was playing a, um, a county final and that's how I got spotted and scouted for an under 17s trial and that's how I found my coach who I have now who's really helped me to improve and change my game for the good. So it's definitely something that I recommend. Hi, 
Hi, my name's Hermione and I play for, as a part of the Loughborough Lightning Under-17s competition squad, which I was selected for last October. I've only been playing netball for just over a year now. I started in year 10 and before that I was a county basketball player. My main sport was swimming. I got into netball through school. Um, I turned up to a school netball session one one day after school and my teachers saw, saw that I had some good potential and they persuaded me to trial for the county academy and from there I joined a really supportive club who pushed me really hard, gave me fantastic opportunities and then recommended that I trial for Love for Lightning. Coming from another sport, I would definitely recommend to other athletes doing netball. It has changed my life drastically. In swimming, you're pretty restricted to what you can do, but on a netball court, I can let sh my creativity and finesse kind of just show for itself. And it's so easy to express myself in so many different ways on a netball court. And I just feel like that freedom that I get from it has kind of changed me. And I really recommend it to other athletes as it just allows you to change your mindset and then you can adapt your other sport into different ways. Skills challenge three, hand-eye coordination and reactions. You will need a ball, can be any ball, and you'll need a flat wall with plenty of runoff space. You need to stand two metres away from the wall, so have level ground in front of it and no obstacles on the wall to set yourself some targets. Watch the demo and the safety advice. Film yourself and record your results. Have a look at how you compare to our current under 15, under 17 athletes. And if you think you've done really well, let us know. Essential safety advice. Ensure you are warmed up and have done some ball on wall warm up passing as part of your warm up before you try the challenge. Always have an adult present supervising you and have your parent or guardian's permission to share your video footage and results with us. You will need level and dry ground of at least two meters in front of a flat wall and some runoff space to ensure there are no obstacles to injure you. Be in sports kit, including trainers, and do not attempt the challenge if you are ill or injured. Reactions and hand-eye coordination. There are two separate challenges for you. The first one is how many alternating hand passes can you do in 30 seconds? And the second is a challenge of 30 passes across three targets. Set yourself up a spot two metres away from a vertical wall with flat ground in front of you. Set up three targets in a V-shape. For challenge number one, you only need to pick one of these targets. Challenge number one, use your right hand to pass it at the target on the wall and receive it with your left. Then pass it with your left and receive it with your right. Alternate your hands over 30 seconds and count and record how many passes you do in this time. Challenge number two, Use your three targets on the wall. First, pick one target and see 10 passes with your right hand on the right target, 10 passes with two hands on your middle target, and 10 passes with your left hand on the left target. Time how long it takes you for the 30 passes from the start to the end. Coaching tips for skills challenge three, hands-eye coordination and reactions. When you're doing ball on wall work, any ball is fine. Set your targets up and have a practice. First thing is the fingers. If you have firm, rigid fingers, it's gonna hit it, it's gonna hurt, and you won't get the control. The control for the wall work and passing comes all the way from soft fingers and through to your fingertips. Try and keep your head looking ahead at the target on the wall. So. You're using your peripheral vision to catch it, but you're focused on the target. Soft knees, move your feet to adjust and keep a rhythm going. So how do you benchmark against our current under 15, under 17 Lightning Academy players? 
Millie, who's a mid-court player, had the most alternating hand passes in 30 seconds at 36 passes. The fastest time to complete the 30 pass challenge was Alana, also a mid-court player, in 20.32 seconds. Whatever your results, share them with us via social media and tag us in. We'll select a range of players to take part in a session with us. We're also looking for performance players, so if you're Y10 and below and can make more than 36 passes or complete the 30 pass challenge faster, get in touch with us. We're really interested in hearing from you. For the strength challenge. Firstly, why is a jump test a strength challenge? Yes, it challenges the lower leg strength, but it also challenges the stability. It challenges your ability to pull in from your core and your strength throughout your body. So when you're doing the triple hop test, try and keep the momentum going. Don't stop on each of the jumps. Try and use each jump to come off and carry on to the next one. When you land the final jump, you must stick the landing. So sink into that landing, try and pull in with your core, tuck your hips forward and sink into that landing. There'll be a real test of core strength. If you start wobbling on the landing, then have lots of practice. A little bit of stability work needed. So pull in, sink in the landing before you stand up and release. It's really important you do both sides of your body and you look for an imbalance. If one side is really strong and you get a good distance and the other isn't, that could lead to injuries. So you want both sides of the body as strong and stable as the other. So, triple hop test. Swing your arms backwards, head up, jump forward, swing the momentum of your hands and push forward off each hop to sink in with a landing. Watch the demo and the safety advice. Film yourself and record your results. Have a look at how you compare to our current under 15, under 17 athletes. And if you think you've done really well, let us know. Essential safety advice. Ensure you are warmed up and have done some jump and land work as part of the warm up before you try the challenge. Always have an adult present supervising you and have your parents or guardians permission to share your video footage and your results with us. You will need level dry ground and to ensure there are no obstacles to injure you. Be in sports kit, including trainers, and do not attempt the challenge if you are ill or injured. Skills challenge four is the triple hop test. Set yourself out a starting marker and balance on one leg. Take three hops forward without putting your other foot down and mark where you land. Record the distance of your triple hop and then try it again on the other leg, also recording your result. Stick the landing for one to two seconds for a valid jump. My coaching tips for our strength challenge for the triple hop test. First thing is your head. Try not to tip it forward. It's the heaviest part of your body, so keep it nice and upright and keep your body in line. Arms, swing your arms back for momentum on that first jump. For each jump, use the momentum of the last. Push all the way through up to your feet to carry you forward. Most important thing is that you stick the landing for it to be valid. In netball, we need nice and strong and stable landings. We need to work on both sides because you want to avoid injury. If one side is strong and the other isn't, it creates an imbalance which really re increases your risk of injury. So work on both sides, stick the landings. As you land, keep your feet in line and your knee in line and sink back into that landing. Tuck your hips under, pull your core in nice and strong and balance yourself up again. And do the same on both sides of your body. And once you've got the hang of it, see how far you can push it and see if you can beat some of our under 17 athletes. So how did you benchmark against our current Lightning Academy players? The longest triple hop and stick was Hermione. Her court position is a shooter. Her distances were six meters 10 and six meters. If you are year 10 and below and can triple hop test further than six meters on both legs, get in touch with us. But we're also interested in hearing how you've done whatever your results. Share them via social media, tag us in, and we'll select a range of ability players to take part in a session with us. 
Thank you so much for joining us for week two of our Lightning Fundamentals. Next week we look at a couple of things. One, what else other than the fundamentals of strength, stability do we look for from athletes? How can you improve and develop in this off season, this extended off season? How can you make the most of the time? How can you prepare for trials? And any hints and tips of things we're looking for when we see athletes on court. Uh, we look forward to you joining us next week. Enjoy trying the skill challenges. We've got four skill challenges out there. All sort suits completely different court positions in netball, from speeds and agility to vertical jumps and strength. Um, we would love to hear from you if you think you benchmark really favourably. We are looking for talented, potential performance netball athletes. But we're also interested in giving any athlete anywhere the chance to join in. So whatever your ability, post your results on our social media because we will be selecting a group to come and take part in training with us. If we can't get on court, we'll be doing remote sessions with you to help you at home. Have a great week. See you next week.